Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that when we look at a lot of the up-and-coming live-action remake adaptations from the animated material by Disney, it's looking very much bleak and very much dark as they are following a lot of up-in-the-ante of the DEI stuff into all these upcoming projects and how this is all being planned out and mapped out by Bob Iger and the Disney board. Snow White is just the beginning. They're actually going to apply this to things like Hercules as well as a remake of Sleeping beauty even though there was a maleficent retelling we also have on top of the list on on apart from all of this we also have things such as not just hercules but tarzan lilo and stitch and a whole lot more than that this is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. I'm also on Twitter at Mike Zero One. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. And let's get right into exactly what's going on with the ending scene for Snow White 2024. Now we've talked about this lightly on and off before in the past. And specifically how we all know that principal photography wrapped back in July of 2022, in case you guys have not been following for a while now. Snow White has been done, all finished with filming for well over a year at this point, and there's still quite a number of months away from even actually dropping the actual movie in theaters by next March, and that's if they don't delay it, mind you. We still don't even have a teaser or let alone a trailer, one of which is supposed to drop at D23 next month, however, on top of that. So, what's interesting about all of this has much to do with Snow White 2024 and exactly what's really going on with Disney and their overall view of the specific ending scene that was shot. Okay, so we know that everything related to this is going to be an ongoing piece of criticism, with Snow White 24 getting much criticism based on Rachel Zegler's comments and the leaked photographs of the Southern Dwarfs. One major development has much to do with the ending scene that was shot back in June of 2022, just before wrapping in July. Now, one important sequence that was filmed involved both Snow White and Rachel Zegler running toward one of the horses that Jonathan owns as Snow White prepares to face the Evil Queen. It's in this moment in which Jonathan is about to hop on his horse to lead Snow White to the castle, where Snow White delivers dialogue interrupting a moment where, of course, she says the following around the lines of how she is going to lead the way and rides the horse into the place called the Forbidden Trail that leads to the castle. Snow White has Jonathan step off his horse as he rides in the back instead, with Snow White taking control in the front. Another sequence during the ending of the film that was shot involves how the Seven Dwarfs storm the Queen's castle and begin singing a cheering song out loud, as they create a pushback against the evil queen and her huntsmen. This sequence leads to the very moment in which the evil queen steps out and uses her powers against the seven magical creatures, using her special powers where Gal Gadot reportedly delivers cringeworthy dialogue about how Snow White's father actually met his demise by her own hands. Now, let me just stop right there for one second, all right? Now, the fact that they're setting it up that the evil queen is the one who destroyed Snow White's father is not surprising in the least. But the thing that I talked about before this is actually even all the more cringe. So, Jonathan reportedly has his own horse in this movie, you know, kind of similar to the original. And there's a moment where Jonathan wants to lead the way. He wants to help and aid Snow White and protect her. Goes over to his horse and he tries to lead the way, only for Snow White to become this girl boss once again. And pretty much downplays him and says how she's going to lead the way. Takes him off the horse and she hops on in the front because she knows the way to go through the trail. The Forbidden Trail is what it's called. That just goes to show you that they are using any opportunity available, Disney of course, on really devaluing any kind of male character in this film. Not only are the seven dwarves, all right, a complete mockery, you have Jonathan who is a doormat, and then you have Snow White's father who is reportedly destroyed or is unveiled to have been destroyed in the past by the evil queen herself, portrayed by Gal. And again, it's not surprising coming out of Disney. I mean, it seems like they just want to make all the male roles either foolish, buffoons, killed off, 
or just not know what they're doing. And that seems to be a common trend. A lot of anything ranging from the latest material that Disney's been spewing out. Now, that brings us to the next big moment here where it gets even worse. Let's discuss. It's not over yet. <laughs> Specifics of the dialogue are said to revolve around how she is the one who destroyed him, explaining how her father was a weak man with no intelligence. One of the more crucial scenes that were filmed for the ending involves a victory scene after the Evil Queen's death. This is where Snow White, Jonathan, and the Seven Dwarves are dancing and singing along to a song that is a mixture of hip-hop and folk music. The song is said to be a piece of music that goes along with Jonathan and Snow White singing, where the Seven Dwarves are playing with instruments while jumping up and down. Now this is worse. There is reportedly no kissing scene here between Snow White and Jonathan even before the credits roll. Only a hug is given to Jonathan from Snow White after the singing session. Nor is there any scene in which the seven dwarves get a kiss on their forehead like in the original. That is of course now a hug as well. So look, this just goes to show you how nonsense Disney has become and how they really don't know what they're doing with these live action remakes. You know what? I take that back. They know exactly what they're doing. They know what they're up to. This is all 100% deliberate and they just want to keep on testing what they can really get away with. So again, coming out after Rachel Zegler's comments about how this movie in particular it's not about Snow White falling for romance. It's about her rising to become a leader and they are seemingly following the whole Helena and Indiana Jones format, where you have Helena essentially bullying Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny. Same exact thing almost applies here, where you have Snow White essentially, you know, talking down to Jonathan and really kind of bullying him in a way and just doing these girl bossy things in this movie, right? What's interesting further, though, is the fact that <laughs> They really are doubling down on really making it openly clear that these seven dwarves in the movie are going to be absolutely hilarious and humiliating for the audience to see and to watch in the theaters. I think that this is going to be an ongoing series of meme material if it really does become that bad, which is exactly why Disney's trying to hide the seven dwarves from the trailer as much as possible, even the posters and cardboard standees for the theaters. They really want to keep that down to a bare minimum. So when those posters arrive, expect the seven dwarves to be like very small in the background, like minimized in the distance where you're, a lot of people really can't notice them, you know, at the fly or at a glance. So, yeah, I mean, I would like to hear what you guys have to say about the whole ending sequence in different areas, about what Disney filmed back in June to July of 2022, and how that still remains in the final cut by director Mark Webb to this day. So yeah, guys, I would love to hear your take on this, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.